Department of Forestry and Environmental Science at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, hosting International Forestry and Environmental Symposium every year, just to expose all the international and local forestry and environmental scientists to the research area. Today we have Dr. Kamal Ranatunga from the Department of Zoology, University of Sri Jayawardenepura, with us here to explain his research findings with us. So, good afternoon, Dr. Kamar. Good afternoon, Professor Sandhu. So, I can remember sometimes back, so you were presenting that you restored the corals in the Hambantota hub area. So, is that the same that you are going to present something, continuation or something new? No, Professor Sandhu, what we did last time for the forestry symposium here was, so we investigate one of the coral reefs in artificial structure, something like a, a breakwater. Mm -hmm. right? So it is a, a naturally built coral reef in artificial structure. But this time we work on And that something was a very, very successful story, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. It was yeah. really and the, the Hambantota Harbour area was a, a new place and no corals and I could remember that you restored it very nicely and it was very successful research. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was very interesting because usually it takes 10, 15 years to build a new coral reef. Mm -hmm. like, but this is just within 3, 4 years we could see a nice coral reef, developing coral reef. Okay. But this time we worked in one of the coral reef in Matara Polhena where we maintain a, a in situ uh, nursery with the fragment that break off from the, the, the natural reef. We collected this uh, break off from the uh, reef and reimplanted in the same uh, ecosystem to see how they grow and what are the different factors affecting the growth of these uh, uh, coral fragments. So the same coral uh, species means the same corals which were existing in the pollen area. Is That's it? right. Yeah. Okay. So, so we use this uh, Acrophora formosa species, one of the fastest growing uh, uh, coral species. As you know, most of the coral grow very slowly, mm -hmm. but this one usually they grow very fast. For this kind of a study where we measure the growth, we need something growing very fast. Mm -hmm. And also, if we are planning of some sort of a, a restoration program, we have to think of a species which can grow very fast. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it, it will take to, to see some sort of effect. It might take several years. So that's mm -hmm. why we selected this uh, fast-growing species. Uh, yeah, the thing is, we had been several conservation or restoration projects for coral reefs, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, none of or most of these were not successful. Right. We had in uh, Hikadwa, in the uh, Benuista Reef, in, uh, but in many areas, but uh, none of them are successful. The thing is, so any conservation project, you have to have a very good scientific backing mm. to see how they grow, what are the factors affecting. Probably the microclimatic conditions. Exactly. There's even so the many, waves. Exactly, everything. There are so many things. I mean, and the, the growing coral reef, there is a it's a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. with some of the, the algae, what is called the zooxanthellae. And without knowing this or without understanding the interrelations with all these genes, it, there's no use of replanting. And also, if there is some reasons for coral degradation, right? There are several reasons, some are natural, most of the cases are natural, and the others are the anthropogenic, mainly due to the tourism. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people like the people or oh, they fishing? enjoy, yeah, of course, fishing, fishing. But in the coral reef, a lot of people now start doing the snorkeling. Snorkeling, okay. and without proper training, mm -hmm. then they, with the snorkel, they easily break off these reefs, mm -hmm. right? And so, your restoration in the in the Polhen area is Polhen God area is Polhen, yes, Polhen, Polhen area is successful. Yes, uh, the, the, what. We initially what we did is it's actually to see how they really grow, how mm -hmm. fast they can grow and what are the obstacles for them to grow. Mm -hmm. So the key finding is as we are in a tropical country there is no much climatic variations but the, the main reason for the 
or the affecting the growth of coral is the sedimentation rate. Mm. So what, that's what we found. So we had uh, so many different uh, locations selected for the study and we found there's a fast growth always when there is less sediment and wherever sediment is, sedimentation is the growth was decreased. So, so we have to understand these things. Without understanding these things, so there's no use of uh, replanting. Mm -hmm. Uh, coral reefs. You can't restore this. Okay. So, how long you are doing this uh, research now? Uh, this work actually did uh, myself mm -hmm. uh, with one of my students, uh, Chamika Siru Ardhan, uh, for his undergraduate degree ah, actually. Okay. Uh, he worked for nine months actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's so the maximum it's, it's, time actually. Okay. Yeah. So, it's basically initiated with the undergraduate project which runs only for nine months and now you are continuing it for? Yeah, we are planning to continue the same study with another species and uh, to see what are the other factors affecting as well, mm -hmm. like uh, community structures, what are the other interacting species, mm -hmm. okay, so we are going to continue the same study. Yeah, and uh, I am sure that uh, Dr. Kamal Rantunga, now it is not only the corals that you are working on, you are working on seagrasses in the Manna area, well, actually, today I, I, I had another presentation on seagrasses as well. The thing is, uh, like we know about a lot of forest, Sinharaja and so many forests, because we talk a lot on the scientists and everybody talk a lot on the Sinharaja, do a lot of research, but there are some other forests no one care about. So these are the, the forests that we can see, or some submerged forests that we can see in the seabed. Mm -hmm. But even the shallow areas, no one care about these things. The, the thing is, the uh, the whole ecosystem. For example, in a lagoon, the the productivity is mainly come from, from the, the sea grasses and the, all the communities, the fisheries, and the livelihood of the people rely on these uh, sea grasses. But the thing is, no one care about this. Now the scientists, now the resource users, or the resource managers, no one care about these things. So, so I. When, when I was doing a, just a ecological study, so we found the sea grasses and, and, and I found that this is really interesting because not many people have worked and no, no one knows how many species even Sri Lanka. I, have se I read several articles, they said there are six, some say seven, some, and some say six to seven and there is mm. no any argument, uh, there, there is no uh, any agreement. For that. agreement. And when we found that the there were eight species in that lagoon only, the Mana Lagoon. But I have worked on Jaffna as well. There are so many... Um, Unidentified species? Yeah, I mean, we need to work a lot to identify mm -hmm. these. And it these. needs sophisticated cameras, equipment, so I'm sure. Exactly, and uh, the problem is always is the, the one obstacle is the technology. The other one is the, 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 the real issue is we need to have some skills to do this one. That's the, the main, main obstacle. You have to be a good uh, Swimming, snorkeler, diving. you have to do snorkeling, you have to do diving and at the same time you have to be a scientist too. You have to be a scientist and you have to be a diver, you have to be a photographer and you need uh, you have to identify these species and you need you need to be a multi-talented person to do this one. So we need Somehow we managed to do, in the Manalagun it was very shallow waters, there was no big deal, but in some areas really deep, so then in that case you need to have uh, the skill as well as the technology. Okay. So, so everybody care about the environment which we could see through our naked duck. But Dr. Kamal Ranatunga from the Department of Zoology of University of Sri Java Dhanapura is running behind unseen but which is important environment ecosystem. So thank you very much for the Forestry and Environment Symposium which opened the arena for all the scientists to get to know the unknown, uh, not, very, uh, not very much exposed fields in the scientific field. Thank you.